How's everyone doing? Zero here. In today's video, I want to show you how to deal with projectiles. I get this question all the time. People just in general struggle with many, many different kinds of projectiles in Smash Ultimate, whether you are a heavy or a fast character or someone with a reflector even. I'm going to teach you the many general ways you can deal with projectiles. So it doesn't matter what your situation is. You'll be able to learn something from this video and apply it to your gameplay to get better against projectiles. Now, just as a general principle in terms of projectiles one thing that you really have to understand from the beginning is that the, sh the health of your shield aka the size of the shield that you have because shield strings the more you hold it is extremely important this is because in smash ultimate it's actually really easy to get shield stab and it's mainly because if you notice when you are when you have a full shield it actually covers your whole body but as it shrinks parts of your body will be exposed like your head your, your leg, your arm, and these things can actually get stabbed through the term commonly known as shield stab, which means that, for example, Samus were to shoot the projectile here, I actually just get hit. Even though it seemed like it hit my shield, I actually got shield stab there. Um, so that actually is very common, and in this game, I find shield stabbing to be more common than in any other Smash game, mainly because they went out of their way to nerf shields in general. G shields are not, not as powerful as they were in previous Smash games. So it's very important for you to preserve the health of your shield. And if you have less than half or even less than 60% of your health uh, in terms of shield, you should not try to block a projectile. So that's like the first thing. I just want to make sure that we, we can already get uh, explained in the video. So make sure to keep that in mind. Now, when someone shoots a projectile to you, you have a few options that you can do. Um, the first one is that obviously you can jump over projectiles. You can also block. You can roll. You can spot dodge, although a little hard, mean, mainly because um, if you spot dodge, some characters just have better spot dodges and worse spot dodges. Donkey Kong doesn't have the greatest spot dodge, mainly because he's a big body, so it's easier to hit him. But if you're a small character like Pikachu or something, spot dodge it, this could be very viable. You can parry as well. In some occasions, you can uh, attack the projectile or clank with it like there. And in some occasions, you can also just get hit by the projectile. This is because there's actually a lot of situations where getting hit by, a, for example, like a fox laser is actually not a big deal because they don't have any knockback. So like, for example, against Samus charge beam, it's not a viable strategy to get hit by the projectile. But against like foxes, lasers or any projectile that doesn't have necessarily... Uh, knockback doesn't stun you but just does damage it might be viable to just take the hit and approach and get an aggressive uh stance going on now the first question i'm sure you guys will have is well why would you not parry every single projectile the thing is that parrying has two disadvantages the first one is obviously that parrying is hard you have a five frame window so it's not easy to do it all the time especially if your opponent tricks you or just shoots it at an app angle that you don't expect it it's actually really easy for you to just just get hit although you can still parry these things one thing to note is that when you parry a projectile you don't lose uh shield health so for example there i lost almost all of my shield but when i parry i didn't lose any shield health so that's the biggest advantage to parrying the problem with parrying however is that you still have to stop your momentum and block the projectile and let go you will still stay kind of just grounded where you are you're not mobile Whereas if you jump the projectile, you can actually, for example, swing and attack and maybe even punish um, the person throwing projectiles at you for, you know, throwing a projectile. But, so parrying in general is very unlikely to give you a punish. This is why parrying is not, it's hard and it's unlikely to give you a punish, which is why defensive movement uh, or like aggressive movement, actually, uh, so you can actually approach the person is usually better so you can actually make a difference uh, so they can stop camping you. Now, these are the ways I recommend dealing with projectiles. So generally, it's okay to block as long as you understand that once you have less than 60% of your health, you don't really want to block so you don't get shield stab. You should usually jump if you feel like your opponent is not going to anti-area you. Like if you feel like your opponent is playing really grounded and they don't expect you to just jump and hit them, jumping is okay. As long as you don't get predictable. Like if you jump over a projectile every single time, it's very easy for Samus to just pretend that she's going to shoot the projectile and then just fair back or kill you or even pivot grab you like that. So obviously you have to make sure that you don't jump every single time. You can also roll through the projectile, which is actually a really good option because um, rolling through will allow you to use a ground method to get through the projectile. Um, obviously, for example, like charge beam is a little harder to do, but if I do it against like the basic uh, charge beam, 
you know, it does have a, a use. For example, your opponent might expect a jump, but you know, you do a roll like that. It's not a bad idea. You can also sure hop over projectiles like the. Uh, like this, for example, instead of full hopping over projectiles, but that's only applicable when the projectile is small like this and not the full charge beam, for example. And finally, spot dodging is really good if you have low, for example, let's say you have a low shield and you don't really know exactly what to do because, you know, you just don't have enough shield and you don't want to die like that. It's a good idea, for example, to instead of dying, um, you can spot dodge through, but you have to have like really good timing. Almost, it's almost like a parry like timing, which in that scenario might not be a bad idea to just attempt to do a parry, but you can also always um block and then jump out of shield last second so either one of those reactions is the way to go but spot dodging is a little too risky i will say it's only like in an emergency situation if you really could not react uh to jump but jumping is generally your best option because it's pretty much instant for all characters now in terms of dealing with projectiles i always recommend um i call this method the one step forward basically what it is is that Let's say your opponent is just camping you over here and you're just kind of frustrated because, well, you don't know how to deal with it. It's getting it's getting annoying. It's getting to your nerves. You're taking damage. What you need to do is that it's okay to get zoned out by projectiles. You don't have to immediately approach it. Like, for example, if Sam is shooting projectiles over here, you're not going to get a punish. You have to kind of hold the L in that sense. But you can slowly approach damage. So, like, for example, let's say I'm getting camped over here. You know, I'll, I'll jump over a projectile. For example, I'll just touch this charge beam right here jump over a platform i'm moving forward you know simon's over here and then simon's will probably throw something else here and now i'm over here so you see how i'm slowly moving my way up and now look simon's is corner so now if i were to uh simon's can no longer throw a projectile because at this, at this point i can pressure her here um i can immediately th threaten her zone and if she wants to run away or something she's corner so now she's at disadvantage so even though i took some damage potentially or uh, if i did it really well i don't take any damage now i'm in the advantage because now i can pressure her out of the situation and projectile characters tend to be very fragile up close, like Duck Con, Mega Man. So when you rush them down like this and you corner them, they can take some damage or even just die straight up from it. So um, basically, I recommend using all the methods I just explained to slowly build your way up to the corner. Um, don't just rush in and don't just dash immediately because I recommend walking against projectiles a lot because if you run, you actually have to wait a long window before blocking. So not notice how I'm going to dash forward and then hold shield. You see how there's a window where I can't do anything? But if I'm walking, I can shield at any point in time, which is why I recommend walking over running. Now, these are the very general basics of how to deal with projectiles. Depending on the kind of character that you are, for example, if you're Donkey Kong, I recommend the walking method. If you're a fast character like Fox or something, I recommend just ground dashing is better and full hops are better, mainly because you're more mobile. So it's easy for you to apply these general rules to get in. Um, and obviously if you have a projectile or a reflector, then it's a lot easier to deal with these things because you can either outcamp them or reflect projectiles while also throwing your own. Um, so it makes it a lot easier, but if you're a heavy, it gets really annoying. Now, just as a closer to this video, I want to mention some specific tips against Simon and Richter. Uh, I mean this because I've received a lot of questions on how to specifically deal with these characters. So I'm going to give you just very basic notes on how to deal with their projectiles. So you guys feel comfortable against them. Now, the first projectile I want to go over is the axe. Now, the axe has a blind spot in front of Richter, pretty much as you can see, unless I'm basically just standing right into him um, and jump. I'm not going to, uh, you know, I'm not getting hit. So as you can see, if Richter throws the axe, um, you're not supposed to stand here and, and block it because as you can see, there's a tremendous amount of shield damage. If you see him doing this, you run in for a punish because it actually lags quite a bit. Um, he lags quite a bit when he throws the axe. Just to show you, I'm holding shield right after. As you can see, it's a humongous window where he just lags. So the axe also always goes in a very specific arc, as you can see. So you can kind of just like run under it, if that makes sense, because it takes quite a bit to get to its destination. Uh, it's ba it's basically an anti-aerial. You're not supposed to jump into this arc and then you're fine. Very important to know is that the axe can actually hit you um, through the level and it actually completely goes through the level. Um, and it can go under as well. So like, for example, here, you see how the axe goes to the level over there. You want to be careful with that. Uh, that's, uh, that's very dangerous, especially off the level because the axe is a, is a good kill move. Then we have, um, holy water. Now, holy water has a few mechanics. The first one is that, um, you can actually catch holy water. So like, for example, if, uh, Richter throws the holy water here, I can catch it. Now that I have the holy water, I can throw it back at him and it does damage. And then it also, you know, hits, hits him with the flame. 
then I can combo off of it. So you can catch the holy water. Um, or you can just, you know, if you're getting camp with holy water in neutral, it's important for you to understand that you don't want to run and block it because it does a lot of shield damage. And it's very prone to just shield stabbing you or just stopping you in your tracks. So it gets pretty annoying. So you don't want to really just block it. You kind of want to just, I want to say you want to jump over it because when uh, Richter throws the holy water, he has a certain amount of cooldown that you can punish when to jump over it and pressure him. Or you can jump over it and if you feel like you're late to a punish, generally they'll throw the holy water and then block and then try to go for an up out of shield option. You can always jump over the holy water and then go for a grab to throw them off, which can really mess them up if they're waiting for an out of shield punish. So that's one way to deal with holy water. You can also just um, just catch it, which is hard, um, but works best if you're on platforms. But the main use that people struggle is when people spam holy water at the ledge like this. First of all, you guys have to understand is that holy water has a cooldown. So you can actually time your regular get up um, towards the very end of it. And then you can just go in and pretty much get up and try to punish uh, Richter or Simon off of it. Um, you can also just jump towards the end as well. So like if they throw the holy water around here, like if you jump like that, it will hit you. But if you wait towards the end, then you're fine. You can also always get up attack it. Uh, if you're in a pinch as well, because get up attack does have full invincibility. So you can just kind of just hit through it. It's really bad if you jump into it. Um, like if you just let go of the ledge and jump into an attack, that's how you die really. You can always wait it out and also only as you're like Donkey Kong because Donkey Kong has like huge hands at the ledge. Uh, you don't really have to worry about getting hit by Holy Water while holding onto the ledge. So holding onto the ledge, very solid strategy. Finally, we have Holy Cross, which you have two variations. You can do the the short one, which is easy to punish, and then the long one, which is harder to punish because you're very far. As a general note, if you block Holy Cross, it returns to Richter's immediately. And then Holy Cross will always go one way and then return. And then on the return, it goes really far out. So what some people will do is short uh, throw it one way. And then it kind of just crosses the whole level on the way back. So be careful with that. It can also combo you. So be careful as well. Main way I recommend dealing with it is that Holy Cross doesn't do that much uh, shield damage. You can actually just block it. Uh, it doesn't really hurt at all. Like if you just kind of just walk in towards uh, Rickta and you see a Holy Cross, you can just shield it if you're long range. And if you expect them to just throw it like up close, like over here, you can always just short hop over it and then punish him. Now, the problem with that is that sometimes you might get hit by the return hit hitbox, which you can always bait because um, if he throws the Holy Cross, you can always jump and then double jump when it's coming back and then, you know, come down with an aerial and then punish him. So there's options for you to bait it out. As long as you understand that it doesn't do enough chill damage and you can jump uh, and then it comes back, it makes it so much easier to deal with. As a general rule of thumb, you never want to be on the path when it returns. If you roll behind Richter as it's coming back, he'll have to catch it. And then he actually lags when he catches it. There's a, there's a small delay he has to go through when he catches it. So you can actually punish that as well. So rule of thumb, don't be on the path. Shield it. It doesn't do enough shield damage. And you can always jump above it. Just don't... Just stand there and then just just take take the axe, take the Holy Cross, take everything on at once. That's how he, he gets overwhelming. Uh, generally, Richter has a weakness because he doesn't really have a move that covers diagonally above him. So like so like this range right here, he's really bad at covering because generally he's going to be retreating and doing this kind of motion where he's just going like this, throwing the whip like this. So. They don't really cover this too much. They can. The very good ones will. But as long as you understand how to horizontally beat him um, and then not just come right above him because he can just do this, uh, it makes it a lot easier to deal with because then you can just bait this out because if you expect them to just do this, you can always just run in and hit him from the ground. So it's a good bait. That's how you can start playing the mix-ups and it makes it much easier to deal with him. Now, hopefully this video guys help you how to deal with projectiles, give you some ideas, some general basics. And hopefully you can just deal with projectiles better. I mean, online obviously sucks. If it's a laggy game, projectiles are indeed OP. But generally, even with not the best connections, you should be able to not get hit by everything. Especially if you're walking and taking your time and just basically playing the patient game. Projectiles will slow down the pace of the game and there's not much you can do about that. It's better to just take your time and not get hit by them than rushing in, getting hit by them and losing. Hopefully this video was helpful to you guys. And I'll catch all of you around in the next video. With that said, guys, make sure to subscribe.
We are almost at 600,000. 600,000 is a lot of subscribers. And I just want to say thank you guys because 1 million might be possible one of these days. And I love you guys for that. Thank you so much for watching. Seven videos a week. Make sure to subscribe. Hit the bell. See you guys around the next video. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.